Hello everyone. Today is Saturday, June 14th, 2025. I'm Mark Brash, your host, and this is Zero Labs. So today we tie a bow on the SB230 upgrade project. So in this photo, this is the GI7B uh, Russian-made triode tube that I ordered from uh, Ukraine, Romania? I think it came from Romania. Um, turned out to be a gassy tube, but uh, by uh, activating the getter for 24 hours, it was able to restore the vacuum and uh, eliminate the arcing that occurred inside this tube when I first when I first tested it after I finished doing the amplifier. This uh, picture right here is a close-up of the 12 volt regulated DC supply that uh, I added to it and this 12 volt DC regulated supply supplies voltage to the keying relay for the transmitter. This is a close-up of the uh, meter calibration potentiometers. The um, circuit uh, for monitoring the plate current and the uh, screen current, or the grid current, I'm sorry, um, was considerably modified for the, the, uh, the new tube. So this is, uh, this is a, uh, an added feature of being able to calibrate the meter. Here is a close-up of the soft start relay and the soft start resistor. This is a close-up of the 12 volt intermediate keying relay. So the original relay in the lower right hand corner of this photograph has a DC operating voltage of 120 volts. This linear amplifier was originally designed to be paired with the SB104 Heathkit transceiver and uh, the SB104 really didn't care that it was uh, switching 120 volts DC, but modern day receivers and modern day transceivers really do care. So uh, the, uh, the 12 volt keying relay is needed to uh, isolate the 120 volts from the input jack to the keying circuit. Here's a close up of the W4ZT bias board. Uh, it is mounted, it is not yet wired, <clears throat> but uh, this is the, the BIOS board installed next to the power transformer and on, against the wall of the RF enclosure. This is a close-up detail of my most prized uh, creation here, the tube socket for the GI7B. You'll notice around the uh, openings uh, is the uh, finger stock that I ordered from Mauser Electronics. I will include the part number that I ordered from Mauser for this finger stock because it is quite critical and it is a real pain in the neck to remove the adhesive backing on this thing before you solder it to the, uh, the double sided PC board that I used to make this tube socket. This is an overview of the uh, entire project showing the GI7B. 12 volt filament transformer that I had to install, the 12 volt DC uh, regulated supply, the soft start relay, the plate and grid current metering calibration pots, and the 12 volt auxiliary relay, and the W4ZT bias board. This is a close up also of another uh, milestone. Please note that the, uh, the, the, uh, the metal that's used for conducting the heat away from the GI7B is not aluminum. I have seen numerous attempts at making the GI7B conduction cooled to the original heat sink using aluminum and aluminum just not does not have the thermal conductivity required to effect to efficiently transfer the heat to the heat sink. When I tested this amplifier using an infrared thermometer 
the highest temperature I recorded was 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees centigrade. I beat on this amplifier really hard and that is well, well, well within specification. Uh, this, this, this amplifier is just beautiful and this is the way to do it if you're going to go conduction cooled. I've seen a numerous uh, Numerous designs that had this tube mounted horizontally with a muffin fan blowing on it, not the way to do it, trust me. This, this is just, I, I cannot emphasize how much I love this amplifier. I'm sorry I sold the first one, I'm not selling the next one that I do, I promise you that. Here is a close up of the 12 volt filament transformer mounted against the front wall of the RF enclosure. And here is a, here is a uh, close-up of the 10 ohm 5 watt glitch resistor that I installed. I ended up blowing up a couple of these when the uh, original tube that I ordered from Romania turned out to be gassy and arced inside. Uh, I ended up going through the getter process of 24 hours leaving the filament on and all of a sudden the problem was gone. And of course the, uh, the reconfigured metering circuit for the, the uh, me measuring the grid currents and all that other good stuff. Here's a close-up of the reconfigured tube socket at the bottom of the transmitter. Um, if you'll notice the uh, the little clamp that's on that center pin, that's actually a um, half of a 3AG fuse holder that turned out to be the perfect fit for the center pin which is the filament of the of the tube. And of course uh, uh, we're looking at the back of the rate of the linear amplifier. I replaced the RCA input jack with uh, an SO239 for an input and I'm showing the location of the two new holes that I had to drill in the heat sink uh, in order to uh, mount the clamp that holds the tube against the, the new tube against the heat sink. Lastly, here is a quick video clip of the test procedure that I used to actually measure the output of the linear amplifier and resoundingly the amplifier produced 785 watts on 40 meters. Uh, approximately 600 watts on 10 meters, maybe 675 watts on 15 meters. This amplifier kicks butt. I mean, really performs well. All right, the rig is on an unused frequency, 7204. The antenna is tuned up for lowest SWR. The linear has been adjusted for this particular frequency. I am at, on the 40 meter setting. Dial indicator is in the range where it should be. I've loaded up the, uh, the uh, antenna. And first of all, we'll show this is the 100 watt carrier reference, uh, two divisions or one division off center from center. Okay, and uh, now I'm going to go to sideband mode. Hello, check one, two, three, four, five. There's my 100 watts PEP. Yay, check, yay, check, one, two, a little bit more than 100. Uh, the uh, CW carrier is calibrated at the 100 watts, and now we engage the amplifier. Yay, check, one, two, three, four, five, 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 and the peak envelope is uh, about uh, 2.8 conservatively. 555, five, five, 2.8, the original uh, 100 watts. Check, one, two, whiskey one, mic, mic, test. Hello, check, hello, check. One, two, three, four, five, 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 five. Yeah, we'll call that 2.8. So 2.8 squared times 100 watts is the output of this amplifier on 40 meters. <laughs> The GI-7B retrofit. Seven threes, guys. So that's the uh, that's the wrap up of this um, of this amplifier project. But guess what? 
I happened to go to the American Radio Relay League Amateur Radio Flea Market today, which is their first ever to auction off some of the uh, donated equipment that has been sent to the ARRL. And <sighs> couldn't walk away. I, I couldn't do it. Hold on. Give me a moment. I will show this to you. That's right, I bought another one, so I'm going to do another upgrade, and guess what? I'm not selling this one. I'm going to do a complete video series on how to upgrade this amplifier to the GI7B. So for those of you amateur radio operators who have this linear amplifier dead, somewhere stored away, and you want to upgrade this to a GI7B and resurrect it, I promise you, you will end up with a kick-ass linear amplifier that is just fun to operate. I mean, half legal limit on your desktop. Think about that. And quiet. No fans. Just, just, just a beautiful amplifier. I, I, I can't... I can't even tell you how much I fell in love with this amplifier when I started to use it, and I still regret selling the first one not selling that one. That's all for now. Thanks all for joining me. As always, please rate, share, and comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone.